This is my Great Eastern Cutlery sub-collection, November 2020. This is No New Knife November, and I'm going to be 100% honest with you right here. Not only have I received gifts of knives, which I was letting pass because I have no control over who sends me a gift, but 13 days in, I broke down, and I have to be 100% honest. I have to let everybody know I broke down and I bought a knife. And it was because of this company. Great Eastern Cutlery broke my will. They broke my will. They just came out with a number 19, Little Rattler. It reminds me of this. It's a little serpentine dog leg, but what reminds me of it is it's small and it's got a worn cliff blade. And I'm ashamed to say that I fell victim to FOMO. I was like, fear of missing out. Every time, every time GEC comes out with a new knife, I miss out on it. And I figured, well, let me just go see. If they have it at Blade HQ, which they won't, <clears throat> because I looked everywhere else, just to see, you know, just to see, just poking around, just being curious. And uh, I said, if GEC, GEC uh, or if uh, Blade HQ has one, I'll buy it, knowing that they wouldn't. I go there, they had one, and it was a lot less expensive than what I had been seeing. I did it. I opened it. I didn't open it. I, I bought it. Just bought it. Just had no no discipline and just tore off and bought it. So that was 20 minutes ago and um, I'm feeling gleefully guilty. I'm feeling, I'm feeling excitedly terrible. Um, but hey man, it is what it is. Live and learn and here's what I'll do. It'll arrive here in a few days and I won't open it until December 1st. That's what I'll do. That'll be my sort of back-end punishment for being so impulsive. Ugh, this impulsivity, it's a thing, man. I gotta, I gotta, mm, gotta deal with it, and I don't mean to make you all my shrink, but come on. Come on, Bob. Uh, okay, so anyway, moving on. I'm just gonna go quickly over my uh, Great Eastern Cutlery collection as it stands in November 2020. Um, I hope it grows because I love these things. This is the number six Pemberton in natural canvas micarta or muslin. I think they might call that muslin micarta. Beautiful swell center, single bladed knife. Love that. Great walk and talk. Great pull. They made these in blue bone, which would have been a, a nice thing to have. Uh, next is the number 14, Boy's Knife. Uh, this is in one of my favorite uh, covers, this sort of autumn jig bone. This one is a classic uh, jackknife, meaning uh, both blades come from one end, one pivot. And this one has a, a beautiful uh, Tidiute style clip point with the machine ground swedge and the long pull. Beautiful clip point blade. And a very, very sharp and useful little pen blade. Look at that. Beautiful. On this one, since it's such a diminutive knife, they broke up the serial number. Let's see. Oh, on this blade here. So it says 14. That's the style. Uh, one, that's the main blade style. That's a clip point. And then... Two, that's for how many blades, and then year of manufacturer, 18. So it's cool. They, they've split it up on both sides of this tiny little pen blade. Next is the number 66, Taff Roper. Uh, I want more Stockman knives from GEC. I love Stockman, uh, the Stockman setup. This is a serpentine uh, equal end jack. Uh, it's, got, it's got a great sheep's foot blade. Sitting proud as the sheep's foot blade should on a stockman so that you can grab it with gloves if you need it. Uh, the main blade here is a nicely patinaed clip point blade. Got that plain oval shield. And over here, let's see, I'm going to do this so they don't scratch. You have the spay blade. I love spay blades. It's like the unsung hero of the traditional knife world. I love that spade blade. Beautiful canvas micarta. 
green has uh, soaked up a lot of oil and use. Speaking of green micarta, this next one is linen micarta. This is the number 15 boys knife. This is the cap lifter setup. So you've got a, uh, what was it the cap? No, the crown lifter it's called. You've got a nice uh, sheep's foot blade there. Nice swedge there and a nail neck. And then you have a nice uh, and very useful, actually, cap lifter with a long sort of screwdriver on it. Great knife, beautiful micarta. That green micarta is so nice. Next, number 15, this was my very first GEC and still my absolute favorite. I mean, look at that, look at that bone. God, that's beautiful. This is a number 15 set up like a trapper. So you got your, uh, your main blade is a clip point, beautiful clip point blade, nicely patinaed on this one. And then you've got an, a very nice um, spade blade for cutting off the testicles of animals. And this, uh, they have it set up unusually, in, uh, usually the uh, on a trapper, the spade blade is behind the main uh, clip point, but they reversed it here. Beautiful blade, favorite GEC. Gorgeous knife. Uh, next is the single bladed um, 15. This also has that same beautiful bone Though of all of them, this is this has the most red in it. Is the warmest. I said, uh, but I have you know like this one, this one, this one, this one, and this all have this sort of autumn bone. This is a great knife. Incredible uh, walk and talk, and and just utility on this knife. I love this. Is one of my favorites to just drop in the pocket, whether or not I have one of those little leather slips uh, in it in my pocket. Great little knife. Very very sharp. Here is the number 44 uh, gun stock in Gabon Ebony. What a great knife. I had a nice patina going on this. and re I recently polished off the patinas on most of these knives. Um, this was a production pattern premiere. This was the first year. And I think I bought this for my 46th or 47th birthday. I can't remember which. Well, I guess I could tell from the date on this. This knife has a really great and quite nice and long, very usable pen blade. Uh, 2018, so I would have been 46 on this when I got this. Yeah. See how confident I am with math. All right, this is a this is a really nice user. And by I, you know what, the only reason I'm calling it a user is because uh, Rob Bixby calls. <laughs> All of his Gabon Ebony GECs users, so I don't know. If they're all users to me, except for this one, but I'll get to that in a sec. This is the number 62 uh, Congress, but like uh, I really like about this one, it's got the longer Warncliffe blade and the uh, nice pen blade, and that's it. And it's on one spring. So having both blades open is not very good for it, actually. Um, but I don't have too many... Um, two-bladed single spring knives and I really like like that. This is a beautiful knife and this um, handle material actually comes from the horns of unicorns. This is called the unicorn ivory and it's pretty amazing. Um, I didn't think that unicorns were real but I ran this by my daughter, my younger daughter, and I said this is called unicorn ivory. What do you think? And she she's like, well I hope they didn't I hope they didn't kill the unicorn, you know, to make the knife. And I said, no, I don't think it works like that. I think they shed the horn, kind of like in a, an annual molting phase, and then they pick it up and then put it on their knives. So this is the number 62 Congress in, uh, in um, unicorn ivory. Cool thing about the Congress knife, it's not named after Congress. It's not a political thing. It's because the two blades come from both sides and they... They make Congress in the center. They meet in the middle. So that's what I've heard anyway. This next knife. Thank you, Mike Latham of CollectorKnives.net. He, uh, he got my ear, said, Bob, I actually have a beer and sausage. I know you've been talking about it. And uh, he sent it along to me. Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate it. 
What a beautiful spear point blade. I, if, if I'm gonna have a spear point, that's exactly what I want it to look like. That machine ground swedge, that long pull, what a beautiful blade. Nice etching, B and S. Now, I don't think I'm gonna use this knife. Uh, when you use a knife, you usually end up getting rid of that etch. I don't wanna get rid of the etch. I think I wanna keep the sucker pristine because uh, I might have to make rent with it someday. Just kidding. I own. I might have to make mortgage with this someday. It's amazing how uh, um, how this knife came out, got snatched up, and then the price of it went up immediately. Okay, beer and sausage. You know this knife. This is the number 86, equal end. Oh, love this. I wish I had gotten a Churchill when I had the chance, uh, which was this frame with a um, clip point on one side and a sheep's, sheep's foot on the other side. Just a perfect folding knife. I, I wish I had gotten one. Um, here we have, I said 86, I meant 35. I'm sorry, 35. Uh, so you have the um, sausage fork right here and the beer bottle opener. That S stands for store. This was, uh, this was a knife sent uh, to uh, collector knives. Um, and that's why that S is there. And then, and then once you're done with your hipster meal of sausage and um, beer, this is what you get all the crumbs and crud out of your hipster beard with the BRR tool. Interesting little etch there. Uh, BRR beard refuse removal, BRR tool. Uh, so this is a very sharp comb. I love combing my beard. It feels great. It's a great way to itch the flesh underneath, but however, uh, but however. Uh, but this comb is just a little too sharp for that. So uh, if you got something in there, you can, but basically I feel like it's a novelty, but a cool novelty to have from an amazing knife company. Next is their Sodbuster. And Sodbuster is a, is a name of case, but you know, it's their, um, farm work knife and this came from the farm and field line and uh it's the what is this the 71 yeah this is the number 71 and it's got a, a bull nose it's got a nice patina on it very sharp these all get very sharp once you sharpen them they don't come that sharp though the recently the more recent ones i've gotten have look at that beautiful thick weave canvas micarta if you don't know what micarta is it's just layer after layer of material, fabric, sometimes paper, oftentimes linen, oftentimes canvas and other, other materials, and then impregnated with epoxy and then put under high pressure and it creates this amazing material and uh, just beautiful, beautiful. Now, this is something interesting I learned from Tobias Gibson, a, uh, a, a YouTuber who, who has a special love for slip joint knives, is that a... a, a traditional sod buster pattern or this kind of bull nose pattern has to have a big pivot. Case knives on their um, higher end uh, sod busters where they use bone covers, I'm not talking about the ones that have the, the, um, the plastic, but the ones that use the bone covers has a very small pin for the, uh, the pivot as opposed to this big pivot. And so that traditionally, uh, that, that would kind of break pattern with a traditional sod buster style knife. Uh, so interesting little factoid. Uh, this is a great, great little knife. It's not so little, but a great knife, great walk and talk on this thing. And um, just a great utility knife for farm and field. Next, we have probably my very favorite pattern. This is the 86. And uh, this I recently uh, featured on the podcast. I got one from my brother. Uh, due to our shared love of this material, um, tortoise shell. Uh, I myself love this configuration. I love the, the traditional jackknife with, uh, you know, two blades coming from one pivot. And this is the perfect setup because you have the clip point, which is my favorite style main blade. And then you have... The secondary, which is this very long, beautiful, and useful sheep's foot blade. So this is the perfect setup. I love this knife. And it's a, not for nothing, but it's not a small knife. What is this? It's about, uh, 
Mm -hmm. It's about a two and a half inch main blade, which for a for a slip joint, that's pretty sizable. Serious fingerprint magnet. Look at that. Very sharp. These uh, later ones have been coming very sharp. Great walk and talk. And what an excellent, excellent utility blade that is. Carbon. What kind of steel is that? Carbon. It's carbon. Love this thing. You got the cloud shield, titty ute trim. That's their fanciest trim. Next is another 86 in my favorite handle material, this autumn style bone with the beautiful, look at that jigging. God, they really know what the hell they're doing. Yeah, all the transitions are smooth. There's no gapping. You could put this up to the sun. You will not see any light through there. Unlike a lot of cases these days, I've been hearing, and uh, unlike your Rough Riders and, and the fun, fun, less expensive slip joints. Look at this beauty. Now the pull on this is slightly less. If this were a seven, if this were a seven, this is about a six. So just slightly different pull. And uh, just beautiful transitions everywhere. Look at that brass liners just hafted into one solid piece of beautifulness beauty oh sorry i wax poetic yes this is the best this is the best i i think this is my favorite overall um gec knife this is my favorite in my collection but in terms of pattern size and blade configuration this one is sweet Though it is a chunker. You know you're carrying it when you're carrying it. Next is the number 38. They called this version of the 38 frame the 38 special. Uh, this They have made the 38 frame with the blades coming out of both ends. I think they've made a whittler of this. Um, and I may be mistaken. They may have made a double-bladed uh, jackknife out of this thing too. But anyway, this is the 38 special model. It's a single-bladed uh, clip point, no half stop. Uh, it's got that long Turkish slash California slash, uh, what do they call it? Muskrat clip point. This had a nice patina on it, which I removed not so completely. And beautiful exotic Bacote Mexican wood. I'm not huge on wood on uh, knife handles. I prefer bone and micarta, but this is such a nice wood. Couldn't say no. You got that hot dog shield. And uh, I keep seeing these in uh, Indian paintbrush red and tractor green bone. And still around after, what is this, three years? What one was this made? 2017? After three years, you can still find this knife. And, and in some very attractive uh, shield, uh, I mean, uh, covers. One of them is kind of this green. And so this is the improved trapper. Improved because, well, you've got your usual clip point, California Turkish slash muskrat clip point. But this, since it's in fancy trim, on Excel titty ute, you've got the machine ground swedge. No long pull, but a machine ground swedge. And uh, that just refers to how it's sharply cut in there and dragged down. I think it's all done with a machine. Um, but what makes this an improved trapper, you know, a trapper is a two-bladed knife, usually a clip point and a spay blade. Well, instead of a spay on this, you get a beautiful worn cliff. I love this knife, and I am an absolute, hmm, I don't know, I just love that green bone. It's so nice. Everything here, the brass liners, everything hafted into seemingly one material. Proud of the half stop. And uh, I said that with a downward inflection. I don't mean, to me, that is, you know, if you get a, 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 a spring that's totally flush at the half stop, great. But it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with the price of tea in China. Is that the term? It has nothing to do with anything. So uh, it's just a little fit and finish flourish that some people really appreciate. I love this knife, the Improved Trapper. 
so vastly improved over the other one. Kidding. Next is the number 65, Ben Hogan. This is my fancy going out to dinner steak knife in beautiful tortoise shell. Beautiful tortoise shell. Titty Ute trim, you got the cloud uh, cloud shield. And Dagnabbit, I'll be darned if I don't see my uh, fingerprints almost rusting into that shield. Maybe I need to hit this with a little bit of polish. But uh, anyway, uh, cool. You've got this sort of copperhead style bolster. That's, uh, that's that shape bolster where you got a little bit of a finger guard thing coming out. Um, copperhead or copper, yeah, copperhead style. And it's pinched, which is a, another hallmark of the higher end um, knives here. This is Northfield Titty Ute style knife. Um, you got the long machine ground swedge. Of course, you have the stake patina and the long pull on, on the one side. This was made in what, 16? Yeah, this one, the, the number's really hidden. 2015, I think this was. It's very hard to see that number. Oh, wait, maybe you can see it there. Yeah, 2015. Such a great knife. Such a beautiful and elegant knife. And I think they did a cheetah version of this. So on this frame, but not with this bolster, with a regular bolster and a swiveling guard. That's a cheetah cheetah style knife. I, I'm pretty sure they did, but I could be mistaken. Great walk and talk on this beauty as well. Next is the larger version of the sod buster. This is the number, uh, the number 21. Great walk and talk, great spring. This thing is built for work. This is also part of their farm and field line. Uh, you've got that nice big pivot peened over there. Uh, you can kind of, you can sort of see, this was called the Bull Buster. There you go. You can see it in that light. The Bull Buster, that's a bull nose style, uh, you know, sod buster knife. And this has that nice tight weave linen micarta that this 15 has, uh, as opposed to that thicker, broader weave canvas micarta on the 66. Great knife. Very rarely carry it. It's it's a big one. It's a big one. I had a patina going on it, and then I decided, since I never carry it, I should just keep it, you know, polish it back down and kind of keep it pristine for the collection. <sighs> it's been a journey, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just get to this last one here. It's been a real journey. Uh, so here in my favorite, beautiful, just autumnal, jigged bone love that is this number 97 swell it's a coke bottle um swell center oh man who's been touching these bolsters Ugh, i'm mortified you know you let someone check out your knife and then you 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 get this so i gotta polish this it's gonna drive me crazy but anyway this is the number 97 a giant knife this is a, let's see, size-wise, it's um, three and a half inch long, beautiful machine ground swedge blade. This is called the Allegheny. You can kind of see the, uh, the um, engraving there, or the etching there. And then you got the long pull, that beautiful, huge bolster. And then the swell center uh, on the back accommodates a larger blade because around the spring pin, the, uh, the contour of the spring back here underneath this has to widen out to accommodate the spring, so, or to accommodate the pin. And usually that little hump is on the inside of the blade, but to give you a broader, wider blade, they make this sort of swell center, and then you can have that, that on the outside and have more room on the inside to accommodate a broader, larger blade. Anyway, there you have it. This, the one thing about this knife, I wish it had a, a, a stronger pull. It's got like a four. It's a very, very light pull. And for a big knife, kind of want a stronger pull. But hey, if I ever needed to go to war with this thing, I'd take some duct tape, wrap it around right there. Nothing's going to happen to it. Heaven forbid. I would never do that. Just kidding. I would... Pick up a, a railroad spike first. What a beautiful knife. 
what a what a what an amazing company what a bunch of beautiful knives not to uh toot my own horn for curating such a handsome gr group of knives but i i really admire what uh, great eastern cutlery does uh what bill howard has pioneered with this company and uh it's it's an honor collecting their stuff because i feel like someday um they might not be around and i just am happy to have all these things I have a few that I sold and I regret selling each one. So I'm never going to get rid of uh, a GEC because they retain their value. That's for sure. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, let me know what you got.